Hello, hello. <laughs> hello, welcome to Leap Taken. This is Mika. Here at Leap Taken, I talk about all things witchy, craft-related, law of attraction, manifesting, esoteric, and everything else in between. Thank you for coming to the live. This is my witchy review, so I'm doing a little book haul, and I have a couple other items as well. And then I want to talk about something that was on my mind, and I thought I'd share it here. First off, I'm doing a lot of projects. This is a whole thing I'm about to work on tomorrow. But anyway, um, while I was at Michael's, one of the things I did pick up was this washi tape. I just thought this was so cute. Like the different types of washi that are in here. I don't know if you can see it. Um, anyway, I thought it was cute. Like the uh, one in the middle, it looks like sort of like a horizon or some sort of like landscape where the sun it makes me think of Arizona so I thought that was pretty cool so I'll be definitely using this um in tomorrow's witchy planning video and then I ordered this from Amazon I didn't even open it yet because I was kind of saving it for this Grand Rising's new being Nubian cutie one, I like that. <laughs> so I picked this up. So this is basically, it's like, you know, a, almost like a trivet. You put your, like your candles on it, um, you know, your cauldron or anything like that. It wasn't very expensive. So I picked this up so I could, um, I needed, I have those little dollar store crate things, but I, I needed more. So I wanted to try this, I'll probably buy more, but yeah. It's not, it, I don't remember how much I paid for it, but it was not very expensive, um, again, off of Amazon, so. Yeah, this is great. It's it's wooden. It's not heavy or anything, but this is perfect for, you know, my witchy needs. So I wanted to show you guys that. Now, on to the books. Okay, so I have no business buying these books. I know this. A grimoire, y'all know. But, hi! <laughs> Hello. I couldn't contain myself. I have been seeing this for a while. This is this is not new, new. It's been out for, like, since 2020, last year, new. I have that same pentacle altar tile. You do? I like it, right? I like the idea because even though I like this color and it gives you a choice of colors, I might paint it. I don't know. I'll see. I don't know. I'm in the mood. If you can see the color, <laughs> I'm in the mood for some color. But anyway, um, yeah. So I picked this up and I was, and it got a little damaged in uh, delivery, but whatever. I it was new when I got it and I went through I did go through I haven't gone through the whole book yet but from what I saw it's interesting and I like it and I would recommend it if you're interested in a uh, green witchcraft and I like like workbooks I, I it's okay to read through some things witchy books but sometimes you want something that is um challenging you to interact with it so I like that how did you come out of the broom closet oh well that's <laughs> I'll save that for later. But anyway, yeah, um, I'll, I'll answer you, though. But just give me a sec. Um, it's a good book. I like the book. So it's got a couple different things. Like, this is part two. Check this out. From sigils to the stars, star magic, and spells for union, protection, and divination. Like, you know, it's this kind of stuff. It's, you know, it, it's up my alley as a cottage witch. It makes sense. Like, self-love spell harmony spell if you're just curious about this um harmony spell the stones that are required or tools you will need an amethyst soda light and kunzite candle a green pillar or seven day candle essential oil lilac now that might not be so easy to come by not everybody has access to lilac essential oil i'm sure it exists but I haven't really seen it, but anyway, herbs, chamomile, valerian, skull cap, metal sweet, gently crushed before using. Again, when you get books like this and you see these spells, you're like metal sweet. I don't have access to that. What does metal like? What what is what is the purpose of using that herb? Um, if the author is willing to tell you, well, it's about harmony. I would just substitute another spell known for harmony, peace. You know. Uh, communication that sort of stuff I would just do that and then matches and lighter uh, matches or lighter so then they tell you before the waning gibbous moon take the stones of amethyst soda light and kunzite with you on a journey once this has been accomplished take these stones to a crossroads and bury them on the evening of the waning gibbous moon fix your 
spell candle. Hold it in your hands and imbue it with your desire and intention of harmony and peace. Anoint the candle with lilac oil. You could substitute this out. I still think it's worth having something like this. For me, these types of spells trigger me and make me think, okay, well, I know I'm looking for something like this, or I don't have all of these items, but I want the intended result. So I just substitute certain things, but that's how I do spells anyway. Also, I, I mean, like lilac essential oil. I've never seen that. I, I haven't. I'm sure it exists because they're talking about it, but I never saw that listed anywhere. So that's going to be weird trying to find it. Timothy, how did you handle coming out of the broom closet with your family and friends, especially if they believe in the misconceptions of witches and paganism? Oh, y'all really want to get into it. I said a chat, but dang, I had a group. I had a chat to find. I swear I will answer this, but this is, I like this a lot, this book. So that's one. Okay, I already, uh, you can see, put uh, little things here. I just started reading the introduction. Um, she is a YouTuber also, Abiola Abrams. I have seen her channel. I think that, first of all, she is a gorgeous woman. That alone draws you in because she's so pretty. But, uh, not but, and, um, by the way, here's her picture on the back if you're curious. She's gorgeous. So, this book is long awaited. She had been talking about this for a while. I don't follow her channel or her actually very closely anymore. Um, but, you know, I have like serious respect for her and her teachings and I wanted to get her book I wanted one to support and two I I wanted her book I wanted to read it so I just started so a couple things if you're curious what what is that even about um, maybe you've come across her channel but like in the introduction this book is a spiritual self-love initiation into awakening the divine goddess within and your sacred personal power and a summoning to deepen your knowledge of self all of our lives, well-meaning folks said, just love yourself, but no one taught us how. And then she just goes on. So it's that. And then, um, although there are other ways to use this book, this God goddess rising initiation pilgrimage is a 42 ritual adult rite of passage. So if you're curious what, what's all involved. And then she says, why African goddess magic? First of all, I love that. Well, why not? <laughs> African goddess magic. This is my spiritual inheritance that I was commanded to share with you. Don't you love that? So these are just just snippets, first of all, and that resonates with me. I like people. It's like, well, why not? And then she goes on to talk about, you know, you learned about Greek mythology, Roman mythology. Why not? You know, why not? So I will be getting into this, and depending on the journey this takes me on, I will be uh, sharing as I go, but I think this is you know sacred rituals for self-love prosperity and joy like i think this is going to be a good one guys i really do like just the material that she speaks on um the message that she gives i like i this woman is so positive i know a lot of people love tabitha y'all know tabitha the vegan <laughs> um i like her too don't get me wrong i love her actually i think she's very um positive and that's nice we need you know people to stand out who are also very positive this woman's very positive also, but in a way that is more relatable to me because I'm not a uh, Christian. I'm just showing you bits and pieces of, of what's in the book. That's all. But yeah, I'm getting into this. I am getting into this. I'm actually very much looking forward. I just got these in the mail yesterday afternoon. So I couldn't really, you know, this as far as I could get was the intro. But, you know, this is the book. Okay. So the Witch's Book of Potions. This is the other one. All right, so I thumbed through this. I haven't gone through it, gone through it, but I have. I'll probably do a video when I'm actually making some of the potions. The Archer Soul says, yes, I'm reading this now. Would be curious to see what you think later on. I assume you're reading the African Goddess Initiation, right? I Yeah, let me tell you. I have a feeling this is going to be something. I'll be adding this to my resources list. Like, I, I don't know. Just from the intro... I think I'm all in, but, you know, I'm going to calm down. <laughs> the Princess Diary says, the Grimoire book looks really interesting. I've been on the fence about buying it. It does look interesting. I'm going to play with it a little bit more, and I'll see. Um, I'm, you know, I just thumbed through them <laughs> yesterday. I didn't really get into it yet because I just haven't, talk, haven't had the time yet. And last night, I was, like, exhausted. I fell asleep really early. 
I had margaritas. I needed to just like zone out and I did. <laughs> but anyway, 90 plus recipes for every intention from healing to prosperity. So what kind of potions do they have in here? Let's say you wanted a fast money potion. Look at that. So fast money potion is two cups of water, one tablespoon of cinnamon, one tablespoon of vanilla extract, two teaspoons of peppermint, one teaspoon of spearmint, stevia to taste. Uh, empower each ingredient to attract money. I'm glad they said that. Then brew as usual. So I guess you're making like a tea. In addition to drinking the potion to activate the magic, gold or silver jewelry can be soaked overnight in the unsweetened liquid to magically charge it, thus creating a wearable money talisman. Mm. That's, though potions are drinkable, the brews presented here are not. However, they do have a variety of uses, including this first one to bathe yourself in the power and abundance. And then they show like a money bath brew. So you, you would take a bath in it. So it's all different types of stuff in here. This is actually really interesting. Oh, I just flipped to this by mistake. Not by mistake, but just randomly the Aries page. Um, the powerful sign of Aries, Moth, <laughs> is the initiator of the season of spring. Those burned under this sign are strong individuals gifted with endurance, but who must caution against impulsiveness. I've leveled that over the years. I'm not, you know, I'm not as impulsive as I used to be. I used to be a lot more impulsive. <laughs> um, but yeah, so if you want an Aries power potion, two cups of water, dried rosemary, dried nettle leaves, three cinnamon sticks broken in half, four tablespoons of blackberry jam hmm. or one fourth a cup of blackberry juice and one teaspoon of vanilla extract so that you're going to heat the water, add the rosemary cinnamon, charging the potion with the desire to enhance and reveal the best quality of Aries. After the potion has steeped, stir in the jam or juice and add vanilla strain through a sieve into a cup and drink. That's an interesting thing. This potion could be drunk Whenever an extra boost of strength and energy is needed for those born under the sign of Aries. Well, I do like cinnamon. I don't know about cinnamon, rosemary, and nettle leaves. I don't know. Maybe it's one of those things if you taste it, it'll make sense. But right now, it's not making sense to me. I don't know. I might have to modify that a little bit <laughs> if I make that one. But yeah, there's some other ones in here that are really cool. This is, it's not alcohol based. Um... Do my kids like that I'm a witch? Oh, my kids are grown, grown. Don't. <laughs> it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, they're cool. They know who I am. I've never hit who I am. Um, they're fully aware uh, of who I am. And I've been practicing for a good part of their life. So you said Amazon is late with yours. For which thing? This one, one of the book, which book? But yeah, I'm digging this book. I'm liking this a lot. Um, so these are my hauls. I'm actually really excited about reading all of these. Um, I will get back to you. I know whatever book I had before about psychic awareness, I have been, it's a small book and I've been trying to read that book. It's boring. It's boring. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's boring. I can read nonfiction books. I do. I read fiction and nonfiction. The book is boring. And it's not really, it's like, um, it, it seems like, okay, you ever click on something, a video, like especially Law of Attraction videos, that's a good one. And it's always like, oh, these wonderful things can happen. You can tap into this energy. This is an awesome thing you can do. And you never get to the part where they say, well, what am I doing? And I feel like I, maybe because I'm skimming and I'm bored reading the material and it's not even that long of a book, but... I'm like, all right, are you going to tell me or not? <laughs> when are you going to tell me what the secret is? Like the secret, right? That book. I don't know, I felt like you're hyping me up. You're hyping me up, but you're not really telling me anything. I resent books that do that, by the way. I really don't like that. Uh, that irritates me. So these are the books. This is the book haul. Um, I'm excited about all of them, as I said before. And the witchy chat that I wanted to talk about, but it looks like, we're talking about coming out of the broom closet, so I'll switch gears uh, and talk a little bit about that. So I didn't have a grand moment when I came out of the broom closet. 
<laughs> I didn't have, like, there wasn't a definitive moment. I didn't have a shocker. I didn't make a grand declaration to anyone, like a group of people. So it kind of went like this. The, there are certain people in my life who I cared about what they would think when I told them. That was my best friend who I told. And when I told her my shocker, she also gave me a shocker or some information. But that's just how we are. That's how we vibe. <laughs> um, that's, that's us. So it's like, oh, you were going to tell me this? Well, wait till you hear what I got to tell you. So it was one of those moments. So it wasn't even like a thing. Um, when I talked to my mom, again, key people, when I talked to my mom, you know, my mom is somebody who will laugh about everything. Like, it's not even supposed to be funny. She's one of those types. Though, it's a coping mechanism. So, people like that, when you tell them something and you being serious, they're going to laugh or make a joke about it. That's just how she is. That's our life. <laughs> so, pretty much that was the reaction. Um, and then um, other people in my life, you know, uh, you know, close people that I care about, I like individually talk to them, but they had already been seeing the woo woo, the new age stuff over time. So it wasn't like, oh, okay, well that makes sense. It was a natural progression for me to start calling myself a witch for those who knew, uh, who know me. Um, when I started leap taking the blog is when I started sort of putting out more and more the new age stuff, I guess, on a public platform, although I don't have that many followers on the blog, but uh, people who follow it, but people read it. And, you know, if you know, you know, you know, if you read between the lines. And then once I started this, well, not started because I had been started this channel, but once I really start like um, putting more videos out consistently and the channel started attracting attention, people who maybe didn't know now know. <laughs> so yeah oh thank you uh, for coming back to that the African goddess initiation okay thank you yeah I um I'm, I'm looking forward to getting into that book by the way but I didn't really have a big moment like I threw a party and I said hey I didn't make a Facebook post because you know I'm in that demographic where I be on Facebook doing that I didn't do anything like that if you know me you know if you know me if it's like people that because we moved around a lot, so and we made friends where we moved. So if you know me when I lived in Florida and you had no idea because you're just, our worlds, at least in social media, haven't collided, okay, they don't know. <laughs> I don't care. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, it's not a big fuss. It's just the people I cared about the most, the closest to me, like close friends. I said my best friend, but there's other friends. <laughs> Um, and like my sister and stuff like that, I told, talk to them, but like I said, they already knew the path that I was on. So it was very matter of fact when I just saying, when they heard me reference myself as being a witch, you know what I mean? So it wasn't like a ta-da, you know, uh, but I'm older. I'm not, you know, I wasn't probably if I was like 19 or 20 or something like that. It might be a different experience. I one me Mika at 1920 would have felt like, oh, this is a thing. And I would have made it a thing. Uh, but and nobody care. Don't nobody really care. <laughs> nobody I know care. They're like, oh, okay, live your life, do you, boo? I think my mom might have actually said those words. So <laughs> it's just it's not that serious. Now, remember I'm married, so there's my husband's family. I'm sure the internet worlds have collided and they've seen things and they just don't say anything. If you, here's the thing, why start a discussion? Why get into like approaching me if you, you know, you don't want to get into defense of your own beliefs and all that sort of stuff. And everybody doesn't want to do that. So yeah, they see you, they don't say anything to you unless they're in a circumstance or situation where they have to acknowledge, you know, this part of you, your life. But Ain't nobody checking for me to talk about being a witch or anything like that. No, I don't think anybody cares really that I that I really know. And if you like I said, if if you know me from when I lived in Florida or Jersey or Tennessee or Georgia or North Carolina, <laughs> if you know me from those times, then you'd be like, 
I guess that's what she's doing now. I mean, they don't, no one cares. <laughs> um, yeah. I'm sorry, I don't have more of a story. And as far as my kids, again, they, um, they're grown. And I, no, they don't care. My daughter is fully aware of who I am, what I am. Uh, she's the oldest. And none of that is not an issue for her. I don't even think she thinks about it. My son either. Um, if I give them gifts, if I talk about, oh, I charge this crystal, I feel like I should give it to you. They accept it and they're grateful for it. Um, in the same way, I think if they had grew up in a Christian household and I said, you know, I worry about you, I want to pray over you, they would, okay, mommy wants to pray over me. You know, mommy loves me and cares about me. So if she's saying this, I'm going to let her do it. It's the same vibe. Like, it's the same thing. So hopefully that clears that up. <laughs> hopefully, you know, I'm sorry I don't have a big dramatic story. <sighs> I don't. I really don't. I don't have... Um, yeah, no, I don't have a, a big thing. It, you know what? I've recently, uh, over the past few years, become close to my uh, father. Um, we did not have any real relationship or interaction growing up. Uh, most of a big chunk of my life and in my adult, you know, early adult years as well. Um, but now, you know, we're uh, talk, you know, pretty regularly. And um, I, what the, I don't know if I said, I mean, he knows I have a coven. I've used the word coven. Um, he specifically asked me early on when we were like in a getting to know, talking, catching up part, if I was Christian and I said no. And um, yeah, I'm trying to think if I use the word witch. I don't know, maybe I need to, sh I need to think about that. But I know I, t I, I just talk like very openly about whatever I'm working on, whatever I'm doing. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm grown. <laughs> so, you know, if I guess for those, like I said, who might not know if I'm related to you, like cousins and, you know, second cousins and all that sort of stuff. I don't know. I mean, if you found out I wasn't, I mean, I'm grown. What I'm trying to think like how that even works. Like, what are you going to do? Say something to me or. Yeah, that would be very interesting. You know, I I, I would actually like to, to, not like to, but I'd be curious to, to have, which one would even come up to me and say something. So the Archer Soul says, I think it's also has to do with boundaries. I don't have a huge splashy story either. No, I don't. It's about like, yeah, I've been very uh, a mature individual um, for a good part of my life. Yeah, I can be silly. I have fun and all that sort of stuff, but I've always been considered mature. When you the type of the way I've always carried myself even the 19 year old and 20 year old me I've always come across as somebody more mature people always thought when I was growing up I was older that wasn't always fun when I actually let's say about 35 people thought I was older than 35 but anyway um I hope I just mellow out and I just look my current age <laughs> but anyway um yeah people uh when you like I said when you come across more mature and you know confident and self-assured like if you start saying I'm this, I mean, they might have a problem with it, but people just approach you differently. So I also, because I am a confident person, because I, um, you know, and comfortable with myself, I don't feel this desire to check on other people's approval either. It is what it is. I don't question anyone and they don't question me. Exactly. And if you did ask me a question, believe it or not, most people who realize Oh, you're into that. Over time, they ask me questions. Like, for real, I get people I haven't talked to in forever will send me a DM, especially like on Instagram. Um, I might get a text and they'll just ask me a random question. Do your kids have a favorite spell that you do? Well, no, because they don't get down with me like that. I would love that. I, I wish I could give you an answer because in my heart of hearts, I want them to be just as witchy as me, but they're not. I am, you know, like, I tried, I tried. They're, they're not against anything, but they're like, whatever. I don't know, they're not, they, they're not, I don't know. I got a millennial and a Gen Z. Yeah, Gen Z. So they just move different. They're, we don't do things the same. <laughs> um, you know, so no, they, they don't, 
have a spell, a favorite spell that I do. I wish they did. I would love, you know what, if I could, if we could like all like do a, a circle together and uh, we all participated in like, I don't know, like a seance or something, like that would be so cool. They wouldn't say no if I was like, guys, I really want to do this. Like if my son was here because he's in the military, they might do it to support me, but they wouldn't like be excited about it. So you don't want anybody doing magic or rituals who are not really invested in it because it messes with the energy. You don't want to make your kids, adult, teenage, or otherwise participate in things, especially like that, because it throws off the energy. It's, it's not a good thing. Um, if they're half believing what is happening or they're indifferent to it, that can have negative repercussions as well so no again i'm sorry i wish i had more fun stuff but i don't it's just me i've been solitary for for years um i've grown accustomed but then again i think it makes sense for people like me i was a latchkey kid i grew up most of the time being by myself in a house um <laughs> i you know i'm used to being alone a lot i'm used to spending large you know time alone um i grew up that way so it's not bizarre or weird like i homeschooled my kids i don't really deal with the outside world as much <laughs> unless i have to but that's to protect my peace and to protect my energy so because the outside world is could be tough all those different personalities and i think we all have some level of being an empath some people you know stuff smother it more um, but also picking up on other people's energy. I don't, I don't really like big crowds. I like the idea of going to like concerts and stuff like that, but I really don't go. I don't make a big deal to go. Um, I probably wouldn't even have participated in half the stuff I've done over the years, but like my husband is extreme extrovert. So, you know, that's how marriage worked. So we, um, did a lot of things where I'm kind of dealing with the overall public but for the most part that's i'm a homebody i'm used to doing things by myself did y'all have any more questions about me coming out because it's not very exciting <laughs> coming out of the broom closet that is oh sorry walk 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 it's not exciting um but the topics I did want to talk about <laughs> was, uh, I was thinking about, okay, so you guys, if you watch this channel, I did a video thing on it before on The Good Witch. I think I did a witchy review on it. So The Good Witch was the Hallmark show. It's the last season just aired. It was the, the last season, the last show they're done. It was canceled. So... <sighs> Now, if you ever watch, first of all, it's Hallmark, so duh, it only gets so um, racy and so exciting on <laughs> on any show on the Hallmark channel. Well, they decided to make one of the characters gay, um, which was interesting, <laughs> and it was a woman character. And then uh, for most of the last season, I noticed that there wasn't magic. And a lot of, from what I read, they said that... Um, like Cassie Nightingale, the person, the lead on the show, she runs a store. It's like a gift store, uh, but it's witchy. And she, they didn't really do any shooting there most of the season. I believe it was because of the quarantine. So you couldn't have like, you know, all the extras on the set and all that sort of stuff. So whatever. So, okay. But there wasn't any real magic. Not until like the last two episodes, like the very last episode, they actually like used some special effects with lighting and gave us the perception of magic. And they used the term witch for the first time in like the last two episodes. They actually referred to themselves. So, well, Cassie didn't. One of the other, her cousin, who is, they're all witches, um, said, yeah, that they're witches. And she had to tell the same sex one, by the way, the same, the one in the same sex relationship. And it just got me thinking after watching that, because I'm sex, I really like the show. And I was hoping that they would do a movie for Halloween because they usually uh, put out a movie as well, Hallmark movie. Um, it made me think of how many shows I think would have been better if they made 
witchcraft part of the plot and one of the characters was an actual witch so recently i got into the Gil uh, gilmore girls the, i'm down the rabbit hole with netflix just that's my that's my business don't worry about it but i got into a rabbit hole so i'm watching gilmore girls i never watched this show when it aired it just never appealed to me but for some reason it is now i'm in this mood so i think if you know anything about this show and i'm only on season one they should have been witches the mom should have been a witch they both the both the the main character the mom if you know gilmore girls if you just saw the, the advertisement for it's the lady and her daughter uh, both of their names are Lorelai. They have the same names. But anyway, uh, the mom, Wiccan, 100%. They should have just made her Wiccan. It would have made more sense, I think. If y'all know what I'm talking about, let me know. <laughs> um, I That's one of those shows I'm watching. I was like, she should have been Wiccan. Like, she's already not really religious. She's a bit of a rebel. She's against... Um, you know modern conventions and things like that she you know she's a single mom she's doing it on her own and i just think that it if we added that witchy component it would have set that show off it's a little corny at least season one i haven't gotten that far but should have thrown in a little bit of witchcraft all right maybe not a wiccan i say because of the time it would have made sense uh but just a regular old witch is fine too she could have been an eclectic witch i would have been happy with that that's one of those shows I, I think it would have benefited from witchcraft. Um, yeah, like the more I get into it, I was like, and, and I want, you know, the townspeople, they love her, but they already think she's a bit of an oddball. So I don't know, just throw in a witchy part. Um, the other show that I was thinking about that could have benefited more exploring the witchy side was Friends. If you watch Friends, and I'm a crazy Friends person, I watch that religiously. Uh, the show on uh, HBO Max. I, I got HBO Max for the sole purposes of being able to watch Friends. Um, but Phoebe, Phoebe, at, like if you watch as much or if you watch it even some of the episodes, at one point she was using tarot cards. At one point, you know, they she taught them how to do a burning ritual. They should have just like expanded on that. She talked about being a drum circle. They're being attending drum circles or having all these like, you know, new agey type friends. I wish they would have leaned into that more. I think it would have added even another component if she was just, you know, very resolutely Wiccan or something like that. Again, because of the time, she would have been Wiccan. Most likely she would have said that. So I would have liked to see that. I would have liked for her to have said, well, you know, I'm Wiccan. She's, she's vegetarian and Wiccan. Like, and we could have wrote, we, the writers could have wrote so many different scenarios and scenes, you know, with, uh, you know, them kind of teasing her like they already did. Cause you know, Phoebe's a little crazy. Um, but that just would have been another one of her character traits. And I, again, a show I think would have really helped if they had a little bit of witchcraft infused in it. Um, I'm still watching Lucifer. I'm still watching the rest of... I'm re-watching uh, because, I don't know, I love that show. They needed to bring witches on there, like real witches, and again, show that juxtaposition because they already showed like Satan, um, like worshippers, Satan worshippers and things like that. They had some shows, uh, I think it's season two they did that. I'm pretty sure, what was the one? I think it's two. I'm not sure. Season one or two where they talked about this cult and they were together and there was a murder that happened they had to solve long story short they could have added witches in that they're coming up on the last season of lucifer in september that airs on netflix and that's it that's the season finale um but i think i hope maybe they will i don't know but i think that would have been cool to see how how do you because if the angels and all that is real wouldn't the other things be real wouldn't witches be real you know and if Lucifer had to interact with some of the angels and maybe they have a natural hate for each other, like that would be really cool. Um, and, and if they played it up from a Christian perspective that they really do worship, you know, Lucifer, um, I'd be okay with that because I was okay with uh, Sabrina, the chilling adventures of Sabrina. I didn't love that aspect, but you know, I was walking around saying hail Satan after watching several episodes. So, you know, I get it. It's, it's trendy. <laughs> it's addicting after a while you know 
I wanted the little cigarette like Zelda, cigarette holder smoking it <laughs> um, with some red hair. Talking about some hail Satan. Yeah, teach your own, right? But anyway, yeah, that was sort of my chat. That Now, I didn't mean to go off into my origin stories of coming out of the brunk closet, but thank you. It's cool, though. Um, but yeah, that was pretty much what I wanted to talk about, like shows that you think could benefit from a witchy element, like either some one of the main characters or supporting cast actually practices witchcraft. Um, or some form of it, you know, maybe not just new age, but a little bit more than new age. That would be kind of cool. Or maybe it's just me. This is the type of stuff I do when I watch TV. So when I say witchcraft is a big part of my life, it really is. I'm watching Friends and I'm thinking about witchcraft. I'm watching literally a show about the Christian devil and I'm still thinking about witches. So that's just me. Did anybody have any um, thing they wanted to ask or anything like that? I wish I could talk more about this book. I will, um, I'm going to, I already know. I'm going to do, it's, the fact that I've already bookmarked this tells you that <laughs> this, is, this is already going to be a thing. I know I'm going to do a complete video talking about this with notes and details and things like that. So um, I'll let you know. Uh, I don't know. I mean, there's there's rituals in here, so I don't think this is something I can just sit down and read from beginning to end. But you know, because I think I'm, the point is to actually do some of the stuff. For instance, um, I found one of the rituals. It's forty two rituals. Remember, your wounded healer ritual, ritual intention to raise your frequency and vibration. Well, I can get with that. You'll need your goddess soul book. So this is obviously something I would have created a jur journal or a large piece of displayable paper in a writing utensil. So that's good. So, okay, I could definitely get with that. I'm looking for another ritual to get an idea of like, do I need like things? Oh, this one, your truth ritual, awkward conversation challenge, the ritual intention to speak your truth in relationships, what you need yourself. So like... <laughs> See what I mean? I like that. So this is one of those thinking books. You get a little deep and, you know, go deep inside. Almost like shadow work a little bit. Okay, so this is cool. All right, yeah. I, I'm very excited about reading this. And I also love that the font is large for the most part. I like that. It makes it easier to read. So it is a thick book, but it's a larger font. If you're like, wow, that's a lot to try to take in. The, the actual font is pretty large, the, you know, so it's, it's thick, but it's not as thick as you think. I don't know if that makes any sense. And I really look forward to trying out some potions in this. I thumb through, like I said, it's 90 plus potions. I don't know if I'll make all of them or if all of them make sense to me, but I will be trying some of these for sure. Um, some, I don't know, a one tablespoon of white oak bark. Like, how, what is that? <laughs> I How? I'm in there. I don't know. Apple, court, chopped, uh, rosemary, and vanilla extract. I'm going to have to really invest in a lot of vanilla extract with this book, I see, because they use a lot of it. Um, yeah. Okay. A lot of herby, very herbal tasting potions. I think I'll be using, like, spring green potion. It's sage, thyme, oregano, and basil in two cups of water so it's like i don't know mm. why well, add honey for sweetness <laughs> all right well i think this is probably going to be a shorter live um as i sort of went over everything and the books and my washi which i'm about to actually start doing my planner and of course my tile which i'm very excited about now that i see what it is i'll probably i'll be ordering more of these for sure but yeah i'm gonna go ahead and get out of here so i got my whole other craft project tomorrow is llamas if you celebrate august 1st i celebrate and um i'm actually going thank you i appreciate that uh gemstones um yeah i was playing around uh with something i wanted to see because i'm curious to do a all over situation uh a different color but i was kind of curious to see just some color 
So I'm just playing around with it. Um, but yeah, I'm going to be making basically a broom. I'm not using this, all of this. I just need one of these. One of them is a little shorter than the other. And the other ones I'll use for decorative purposes. But yeah, I'm, I'm making a broom <laughs> tomorrow. Um, as a celebrate, as part of my, you know, celebrating llamas, uh, I'll be making broom, making a broom. And I know I'm going to have cornbread with my meal for sure. Um, corn is a whole other thing. By the way, you can make it that hot, like um, the pagan holidays. If I'm in Arizona, so it's not like a harvest time here. It doesn't feel like the weather is going to turn. Like it, it's, it's hot as balls here. So I am thinking in terms of what makes sense to me to celebrate based on where I'm regionally located. Before this, we were living in Florida. You know, same thing. It didn't feel the seasons that the will of the year are celebrating didn't really resonate with my reality, you know, of where I was living. So I take what makes sense based on where I'm at. So I, I'm, you know, I'm in Arizona. So, you know, corn and things like that. I think of the indigenous people that would have been here. Um, so yeah, I'm going to make sure I have cornbread. I'm making the cornbread and, um, I want to make a, a broom. This won't be a broom. I actually use to sweep the floor. Uh, that's what the room was for, but anyway, no, it's, a, um, just a Sarah, I'm going to use it in you know ceremonial type thing. So I've never made one and believe it or not, I had one. It was a cinnamon broom, uh, from years ago, but I, and they had them out by the way, cinnamon brooms, at least at the Safeway where I'm at, I know they had some on display. I should have picked it up when I saw it, but yeah, they, they're bringing that stuff out early for the fall. So Maybe tomorrow, if you're looking to celebrate a little bit of, you know, a Lunasad Lamas moment, um, go look for a cinnamon broom, <laughs> uh, get a jump on it, buy two, you know, so they can hopefully stay fresh until October. But yeah, they usually do keep their smell for the most part. I don't know, buy a couple of them. But yeah, that's pretty much it. So I am going to go. I think I'm pretty good. I'm going to go have lunch and enjoy my Saturday. <laughs> so thank you guys for coming here. Please like, subscribe, share. I really appreciate, um, you know, you guys even showing up and thank you, Kyle <laughs> and Timothy, uh, for even initiating that conversation. I really appreciate it. Actually. I'm sorry if I let you down, if it wasn't a big ta-da, I wish I had more drama around it, but I don't. Um, if I did, I probably would have already shared it anyway, because how dare someone have a problem with me being a witch? That's my attitude. All right. So have a good weekend, everybody. Enjoy your day wherever you are, whatever time it is. I still have plenty of daylight and I'm going to have a little fun myself and do some more crafting. That's what I do on the weekend mostly and make some videos. All right. So I'm out of here. Bye. <laughs>